Hello everyone, I am Prasad from Structure Guide. Today we are going to discuss about sub reinforcement detailing. What are the important facts that we must be aware when you are doing the detailing of slabs and when you are doing the construction of slabs. So this video will be very important. You will be knowing where to put the reinforcement in slab, how do you put the reinforcement and the, what are the common mistakes we do in slab reinforcement detailing. In this video, we are going to cover the basic concept of slab reinforcement detailing. Okay, let's start the video. Right, let me draw the slab and show you the general stress distribution of a slab. Right, this is a kind of a slab have two spans. Okay, so we have a two spans. That that means you have a two beams here. This will be supporting the slab too. Three beams actually, three beams here. So these are the ones you support the slab. You have a loads on the slabs like this. You may have loads on the slab. So let's see how the slab is behave. Now the middle part will be deflect to a downwards. Here also will be deflect downwards, but at the support it won't be deflecting. So where it won't be deflecting will generate the hogging moment or the tension uh, or bend, hogging bending moment, and where the deflection is. Uh, in downward direction the bottom will have the tension so it will be like this right it will be like this right. okay so here when you have a loads downwards you have a downward movement on the slab so then the your tension will be at the bottom if i may enlarge the slab now your slab will be reflect like this right your tension will be at the bottom and your compression will be at the top right so your tension will be here and your compression will be there here you can't have a deflection in the beam so therefore tension will be developed there compression will be developed here here you have the tension uh, and then you have the hoggy movement as you can see here here you have the tension and your top you have the compression here also we have the tension that's how it's behaved where the tension develop is now I think it's clear to you so you have a tension always at the supports and at the mid span so the, when we go to the principles now we uh, when when uh, when we talk about the concrete concrete is strong in compression then when 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 there is a tension you have to provide the RF right when you have a compression you need not to provide the Reinforcement always in beams there are a certain situation in the slabs but you don't provide compression reinforcement most of the time that for the reinforcement we have we have a tension so as you can see here it's clear now where you should provide the reinforcement now let me draw the slab and show you how where we should provide the reinforcement right this is the our example I will let me draw it again so we have a tension here as I mentioned so you have to provide the reinforcement bottom you have a tension you have to provide the reinforcement here at the support also you have a tension so you have to provide the reinforcement at the top right now it's clear to you where we need to provide the reinforcement in these locations you have to provide the reinforcement those are the places the it will generate the tensile stresses in the slab due to the deformation of the slabs so these areas you must provide the tension reinforcement and you should not avoid any of these locations providing reinforcement. Now let's see how do you provide this reinforcement. Let me draw this bit enlarge or the will indicate the slab bit thicker then it will be easy for us to draw the reinforcements of the slab. Right. This is like this. You see here. Here we have to provide the bottom reinforcement. Now we have to have a top reinforcement. What we can do is we can you provide a single U bar like this. So with the single U bar, you can cover the both top and bottom reinforcement. Okay. Now when you come to this span, let's see this span more than the available length. Now usually you have a reinforcement in length in six meters. Sorry, in six meters. Or you can have it 12 meters. Let's say your slab is you are in for your construction, you are using 6 meter bar. And let's assume this span is 6 meter. This, for example, let's say so you can't provide the 
single u bar like this here so you have to have additional u bar so you have a single bar like this and then since the length is not enough you have to put a separate u bar here because uh, the, the, the length is not adequate to have a single bar and provide like this so that's fine and also here you can have you should have a top reinforcement bar right now it's clear how do you do the dt now you have a single u bar single u bar or one but the bottom bar can be continuous as u bar and top reinforcement so what are the length requirement in general this this may be different on the your code of or code of practice but generally this length beyond this being generally we could go around 1.15 l 0.15 l what's l l is this span the span of the slab right so generally this is the shorter span we have to consider the shorter span so shorter span 0.15 l is the requirement we have to provide here in this side also you have to have same length span now when you come to this one this length generally it will be around about 0.25 to 0.3 l okay in between this 0.25 l or 0.3 l we have to provide so this extension of the top reinforcement should be like this here the l is the span and also it will be the shortest span and also have to consider both the spans this and this and then you have to select the highest value highest span for when you select in the top reinforcement at the at, at, at the connection of two set panels right here now it's clear now bottom reinforcement also here you can provide the bottom reinforcement left there then you your detailing is complete now extension of the reinforcement at the top is the concern so you can provide here but in you have to keep in mind to follow the your relevant standard and specified values in those standard when you're doing the detailing right now with that it's clear to you the reinforcement arrangement in addition to this i have to mention about this now i have shown the section in one direction but you have a distribution bars in the other direction as well so when you have a slab like this so you have to provide the distribution bar in the slab right what are these distribution bars what, what, what do you call those now when you draw a slab panel now let me draw a slab panel like this so, so i draw i did draw only one panel so we have a top reinforcement here the middle bar and the bottom reinforcement will be goes like this now as we discussed there like this so this bars will be will put like this right so you have a top reinforcement like this but so it's only single bar so other direction also you need to have a bar to hold this all bars together right this those bars are called the distribution bars these are the distribution bars distribution distribution bars so what are the spacing of this bar generally these bars can be provided in the range of 2 to 300 mm even you can increase that but 250 to 300 would be good for spacing for the distribution bars in order to control the crack in the reinforcement slab it will be good but even if you can increase even you can reduce that will be good if you can reduce but it will be cost not it might not be possible to but when it comes to the higher slab thicknesses definitely you have to reduce considerably in the early thermal cracks right now it's clear to you how do you provide the distribution bus we have to provide the distribution bus here we are for top reinforcement like this so because we have the reinforcement in the slab in the other direction as well like this so all the directions you have to provide the distribution bus in this side also you have to provide distribution bar then generally this area will be empty of the reinforcement other than that this whole area will be filled with the reinforcement you can see here also in the middle you don't have the reinforcement at the top here also you don't have reinforcement but other areas you have reinforcement so this area will doesn't have reinforcement other areas you have to provide the reinforcement in addition to that we are going to discuss one more thing how do you do the detailing of the cantilevers now when you have a cantilever slab like this so you have a cantilever slab like this so what will we do now when you have a cantilever slab now we have a load somewhere here when we have a load like this so your tension will be at the top 
so it will go like this here hugging bending moment may be varying like this so it goes downwards at the end to the mid span when it goes to the mid span it will go to the other side right anyway you have a tension here so you have to provide the reinforcement as we discussed previously you have to provide the reinforcement where you have the tension stresses tension stresses right so you have to provide the reinforcement here at the top in a cantilever you have to keep in mind the tension reinforcement are the key element or key requirement other than that because the concern of compression reinforcement is very not very important but it has to be provided as a hangers and also to control the crack control and durability requirement etc but tension reinforcement is the one which carry the load in cantilever slab in this kind of situation so this will carry the load therefore we have to provide the tension reinforcement at the top and the cantilever so we have seen in some some constructions people have put the reinforcement in the bottom without knowing what we are to provide the reinforcement we are to fix the reinforcement you might avoid the bottom reinforcement but you cannot avoid the top reinforcement in a cantilever definitely it will fail somewhere here it will look crack crack because it, when the load increase the tensile stress to the concrete it won't be able to bear the load so it will crack and collapse so they have to keep in mind to provide the top reinforcement at the cantilevers right now you have to provide the distribution bars as well so i didn't draw the bottom reinforcement so let me draw it so bottom reinforcement will be all the like this so if i make it a bit simple right it's like this so your top reinforcement will be like this and the bottom reinforcement will be like this so the bottom reinforcement will be left with other reinforcement but top reinforcement will continue certain extent that is required right where we terminate the top reinforcement that's the most important thing here we should discuss this length right generally this length the continuation left of the top reinforcement generally let's say this cantilever length is x right so this length will be one point generally 1.5 x generally this is the extension of the top reinforcement generally but you have to keep in mind to check the bending moment diagram or the hooking moment in special situations because this 1.5 extension into l 1.5 x this x is the cantilever length is considered considered in general facts but in certain cases you might get the more more extension more requirement of more extension depending on the behavior of the slab especially you have a large spans and the shorter spans is like this say sometimes it would cause required to have a slide like this sorry you have a slab like this so if you have a very small span here so and we have a very large cantilever very large cantilever your bending moment the hooking moment will i mean will go like this right so it will go like this and then it will go other way so your bending moment here your bending moment here won't be zero here you can see throughout the section you have the tension so you have to have a tension reinforcement bar continue like this you might left where we are when we have a, we have not adequate length but other than that you have to continue this tension reinforcement you cannot terminate as we suggest here so those things you have to keep in mind so i think it's clear to now clear to you now how to provide the reinforcements in the slabs so what are the requirements and how do we consider the reinforcement detail more importantly you have to keep in mind to provide the tension reinforcement where you find the tensile stresses in the slabs in this location you must not avoid the reinforcement in slabs that is the main idea that i want to give to you today so let's meet again from a video like this to share the knowledge with you. Thank you very much for watching our videos.